You're watching KCAL 9 News at 3. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mia Lee. It is 3 o'clock, and here is the latest today. Flying to worlds beyond our own, President Bush today says our nation needs to go forward into the universe. He hopes to have man back on the moon by the year 2015, then on Mars not long after that. KCAL 9 Skip Lozier begins our team coverage with the details of how the president plans to get it done. The Eagle has landed. It was 35 years ago when the U.S. first put men on the moon. One small step for man. But the United States hasn't put a man on the moon since 1972. Now, President Bush appears poised to get the U.S. going to the moon again and staying there for a while. Human beings are headed into the cosmos. The vision is for NASA to begin a series of robotic lunar missions in 2008, developing crew exploration vehicles which can transport people to the moon by 2015. Once there, the space agency wants to establish a base on the moon that can act as a way station for manned expeditions to Mars or other places in the solar system. We will build new ships to carry man forward into the universe to gain a new foothold on the moon. The president will ask Congress to increase NASA's budget by nearly a billion dollars a year over the next five years. NASA Administrator Sean O'Keefe says every taxpayer will be asked to contribute 15 cents a day, but critics contend the cost will be prohibitive. Uh, so if we just want to go out into outer space with, while leaving millions of children behind in the No Child Left Behind bill, we're making a serious mistake. By the way, the president's plan calls for the space shuttle program to be retired in 2010. In Washington, I'm Skip Losher, KCAL 9 News. The thought of someday putting a man on Mars could mean a lot to Southern California's economy. Workers at the Boeing plant in Huntington Beach couldn't be more excited to hear the president talking about the future of space travel. KCAL 9's Dave Lopez joins us live with their reaction. Dave? Well, me, it's so much too early to give you any concrete numbers as to how many more engineers uh, will be hired uh, when this begins. But let's just say that they're very enthusiastic here. December 17th, 1972, Gene Cernan, the last man on the moon for anybody. And let's uh, say that there are some engineers here who have wanted to hear since that day a president say, let's go back to the moon, and then some. The ability to, to get back to the moon is something that I've been working for all my life. As a kid, just with imagination, going, wow, doing space stuff is just amazing. And it's just cool. You know, it's just as a young kid growing up, and you would imagine and just play with your friends and stuff. So to they. actually come here and help programs that will support things like this. At the Boeing plant in Huntington Beach, from the newest employees to the seasoned veterans, the feeling today is one of euphoria. We are NASA's largest contractor right now, and uh, we're hoping that we would continue to uh, perform in that capacity for uh, such uh, visionary uh, uh, goals as this one. We Man. have liftoff of a Boeing Delta II rocket. Boeing and its subsidiary companies have played a role in the space program from the beginning, more than 40 years ago. The space shuttle, the space station, all work of Boeing. And go further back, the lunar module and the Apollo capsule. At the height of the space age, more than 50,000 people work for Boeing plants throughout Southern California and in Orange County. Today it's down to 6,000. But that could all change now that we're going back to the moon and beyond. Our Delta rockets have launched uh, two uh, uh, recent Mars rovers. That one has already landed the uh, Mars Exploration Rover Spirit. The feeling at Boeing is you can't beat our track record. In convincing NASA, it can get the job done. And they're chomping at the bit the to do it again. Center. President Bush wants to take uh, about 10 years, mm -hmm. but we could do it in three. All we have to do is rebuild the Apollo rockets. We've got all the sketches. Veteran engineers refer to the days of Apollo and the early space shuttle days as the glory days, the time when it was fun, exciting, the world was watching. With today's challenge, they're hoping those days come back. So you'll still be here 2030 and applauding, standing up when we land on Mars? I hope so. We'll see what happens, but uh, that would be a good thing. A man on Mars? Well, I can remember when they announced we were going to the moon, and some people said it can't be done. Your point live from Huntington Beach, Dave Lopez, KCAL 9 News. Come on, Dave, don't date yourself. <laughs> Thanks. In Pasadena, scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory feel as though they've already arrived on Mars. Their Spirit rover should start roaming the Red Planet sometime after midnight. Vice President Dick Cheney is at JPL, and we're expecting to hear from him at any minute. We'll go there live if and when he starts talking during this newscast. Well, earlier today on Mars, Spirit rover completed the last of three turns atop its lander. And tonight, as we said, just after midnight, the rover will move 
about 10 feet onto Mars. Earlier, Spirit finished snapping all those pictures of all its surroundings, sending those images of the red planet back to Earth. Rover's first job will be to explore an unnamed crater about 825 feet away, then try to reach distant hills, following a meandering path and pausing to sample rocks and soil. Its course has been plotted out by NASA scientists who were able to pinpoint Spirit's location on Mars. Reminder here to be sure to stay with KCAL 9 for continuing coverage of Spirit's mission. We'll have all the latest from JPL in Pasadena as their rover starts roaming the red planet, as well as comments from Vice President Cheney. Well, President Bush wants to send humans back to the moon and then onto Mars. The president says robots have done well in space, but humans still need to see, examine, and touch what they've found. KCAL 9's Josh Rubenstein is live at Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, where scientists are about to send a rover across the red planet's surface. Josh? Oh, Pat, this really has brought out the dreamer in all of us these past couple of weeks. And the men and women here at the Jet Propulsion Lab are making those dreams a reality. The Mars rover, the Spirit, just about to roll off of its pedestal in the next uh, few hours and start exploring the Martian surface. But after listening to George W. Bush's speech, speech today, it's only the beginning. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Space has always been our final frontier, from those famous first footsteps on the moon to a five-foot rover poised to peruse a Martian environment. Our thirst for knowledge of far-off worlds has driven our science. Today we set a new course for America's space program. We will give NASA a new focus. And that focus of space exploration will now expand far beyond the reaches of the Earth and moon. President George W. Bush outlined his plan for manned space flight to other planets. We have undertaken space travel because the desire to explore and understand is part of our character. An exploration that will take us well into the next decade. In Houston today, the president presented a laundry list of goals for the space program over the next 25 years, completing the International Space Station by 2010, manned exploration of the moon no later than 2014, and eventually creating some type of spacecraft that could carry humans further than they've ever traveled. President Bush's words in Houston echoed those of President Kennedy more than 40 years ago. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. We will then be ready to take the next steps of space exploration, human missions to Mars, and to worlds beyond. The president's plan turns science fiction to real science, but it will leave behind some of the greatest successes in the past two decades. The space shuttle and the U.S. involvement in the International Space Station will be phased out over the next ten years. At the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, the future of the space program is now, as the Spirit Land Rover readies itself for a Martian cruise. And take a look at these pictures here from that uh, Mars Land Rover right now. Incredible detail like we've never seen it. Now, of course, the president's lofty goals are going to cost a lot of money. $86 billion in NASA's working budget. $11 billion going to be allocated to, of course, his new plans. And he did allude in his speech that he's going to invite other countries to join in the effort and share some of those expenses. We're live at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena. Josh Rubenstein, KCAL 9 News. All right, thank you for that, Josh. And the prospect of putting a man or a woman on Mars could be a big boost to Southern California's economy, particularly for workers at the Boeing plant in Huntington Beach, who could not be more excited to hear that President Bush is talking about the future of manned space exploration. President Bush wants to take uh, about 10 years, mm -hmm. but we could do it in three. All we have to do is rebuild the Apollo rockets. We've got all the sketches. Boeing and its subsidiaries have played a huge role in the U.S. space program since it began more than 40 years ago. Workers hope the new plan could mark the return to the days when the company employed 50,000 people locally, rather than the current number, 6,000. So, here's a review of the timeline President Bush has in mind for the space program. By 2008, robots would land on the moon. In 2010, the President wants the U.S. to withdraw from the International Space Station. Also that year, the shuttle fleet would be retired. A new type of spacecraft would carry Americans back to the moon in the year 2014. And in 25 years or so, we could see a manned mission to Mars.